Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I have a very splat-tastic tutorial for you. Uh, it's all about creating 2D splats or cartoonish splats inside of Cinema 4D. So you know I love to kind of give the Cinema 4D user some very handy, useful things they can do to kind of supplement their 2D workflow and this is a perfect example of that. So I've done uh, a lot of cloud, how to do clouds, how to do uh, 2D flames, and now we're doing some splats. So uh, you can see in my viewport here that it's a fairly simple setup and uh, it's, it's all controlled by just a couple keyframes. Uh, to create these nice little splats. And the nice thing about it is is that it's very customizable. Uh, it's very easy to create a bunch of splats very quickly and easily by just kind of adjusting uh, random uh, seeds and stuff like this. So let's uh, get started and show you how I created these splats in uh, Cinema 4D. All right, so let's actually just start out with a whole entire new scene here. And what we're going to do is we'll create a sphere, and this is going to be like our main blob. And we'll just apply a bright material on there. We'll just name this blob. And uh, we'll just shrink that down to, say, 50 or so. Uh, and what we're going to do is then create a uh, all the little arms, the little blobby splat arms that kind of emanate from this main object. And to do this, we'll just duplicate this blob, and we'll just name these splats and we'll clone a bunch of them so I'll get a cloner place that splat object under the cloner and we'll just make sure we have uh, these set up uh, radially cloned radially and then have these go in the right way uh, and you can see that we now have uh, these little balls these little spheres that will when you keyframe the radius here that will emanate out so let's actually just do exactly that and keyframe uh, the radius here. So at frame, let's just bring this down to frame 10 uh, and go to our radius again and hit a keyframe at frame zero. So we just keyframed these little spheres emanating out radially from uh, the, main, the main sphere here. So nothing too exciting yet. Uh, so what we actually need to do is make this very blobby looking. And if you know, uh, about meta balls, you know that meta balls are all about making things blobby. So what we're going to do is uh, place the blob and the cloned objects underneath this meta ball, and you can see that this makes this kind of pixelated blobby kind of thing going on. Uh, let's actually change the uh, editor and render subdivisions here and adjust the hull to get a little bit more of that form. So what the meta ball is doing is just placing like a saran wrap mesh <laughs> over everything. Uh, kind of like sliming it uh, and you can see that we get a little bit of uh, a sense of uh, some kind of splat action going on uh, but as of right now we don't have anything to connect the arms to the main uh, middle of our splat so the nice thing about metaball is that not only does it affect spheres and work on spheres but what you can actually do is it also works with splines so what we can do is actually create splines that connect or trace the trails of these uh, cloners out here, these cloner objects out here. So what we can do is create a tracer object, and what the tracer object is going to do is if I place this underneath the meta ball here, and if I make sure I'm tracing this cloner, what it's what it's going to do is trace the path of all of those cloners as they animate. And since we have the uh, the radius animated here, it's going to create a path from the center where it starts all the way out to where they are at, uh, at this frame when the radius is 140. So go to our tracer. The one thing we need to turn off is this trace vertices. We don't need to trace the vertices. We just need to create a single spline that is tracing the animation path of those objects. So if I hit play now, you can see that due to the tracer creating these splines, and you can see the splines as I turn off the meta ball here, uh, we now have these nice little splat arms that are emanating from uh, the object. and get a little bit more form of that if we adjust the hall value here so we get a little bit more thickness to those arms. Uh, if we adjust the cloner, uh, cloner count, we get more arms, so we get a little bit more of a sense of this kind of splat action going on. And another big thing is 
uh, you can see that the arms kind of taper out, and that's due to the radius of our actually sp uh, the splat arms at the end here. So if we increase the radius of these splats here, you get more of a sense of a continued uh, arm there. So we get these nice little like kind of uh, droplets at the end where all the uh, little liquid parts kind of uh, connect together at the end of each of these bl uh, splat arms here. So that's looking good. Uh, one thing we can do to make this a little bit more interesting though is to create a little bit more organic randomness in our splat because all of these splats are radiating fairly, uh, uh, very not very uh, organically, it's not very, there's no randomness at all, they're spaced evenly and when you make a splat it's not, it's very messy, it gets all over the place and it's not very uniform at all. So a couple of things we can do to add a little bit of randomness is to one uh, adjust the offset so that's just adjusting the offset of all of our clones in general but then we can adjust the uh, variation offset and that'll actually randomize that offset so I like to keep this at kind of a low value because we only want like a subtle kind of offset going on here so you can see that uh, by adjusting this a little bit we're getting a little bit more randomness in these arm spacing uh, and really just a little bit goes a, a long way in that respect so uh, let's see you can also adjust the uh, the off seed or the offset seed here and see what that looks like so we still want some decent amount of spacing. I think that looks good enough where we have a little bit of random offset there. Uh, another thing we can do is uh, actually add a random effector to this cloner. Let me rename this to splat arms. So that's our cloner object. Uh, and what we can do is go and add a random effector like so. And what we can do is let's just turn off all the position stuff here. But what we want to do is actually randomize the position in the Z uh, I think it's the Z yeah so let's let me uh, let me stop this for a second and turn the metal ball off so you can see that by adjusting the randomness here in Z we're kind of offsetting how far those splats kinda of go out so you can see that that's due to the random value here. We can also adjust the and constrain the randomness so there's no negative values perhaps or we just clamp it all to positive and then we can kind of clamp how much that maximum length or that maximum distance is. So uh, let's see, there we go. So we can adjust all this, turn this back on so you can see that some of our arms are moving in or moving out a lot and some of them are staying relatively uh, close to the center here. Another thing we can do is randomize the scale of these guys so some of them will be thicker, some of the, the spheres will be bigger therefore making some of the arms thicker and we can get back some of that geometry by just decreasing the hull value here you can adjust the uh, actual center blob to get more of the uh, center of the splat back a little bit here. Uh, one thing I like to do is, so we have this radius kind of animating as well. What I'm going to do is, there's a couple ways to actually animate this. And this is fine if you just want a stationary splat. But what you want to see is the splat actually kind of fall uh, like a big blob of paint or something fall from the sky and then splat and right now it's just stationary it's just a splat on the ground uh, so what actually first thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of the radius here and just start out with a with just no radius at all uh, but you can see there's actually no animation happening because of our random effector it is not uh, affecting anything right now uh, but we'll fix that in a little bit here. So what we want to do is let's go to our meta ball, our meta ball group here, and what we're going to do is just keyframe the position. So we'll just bring this all the way up in the air, 
say about 600 and set a keyframe and so our object kind of falls to the floor and right now we're not seeing any kind of splat action going on at all uh, so if we increase the radius or the the length of the splat or of the randomness that that kind of pushes the uh, the spheres here you can see that since nothing is animating uh, we're not getting any of this tracer object because remember this trace is animation there's no animation it's not going to trace so what we need to do is actually create a fall off for our random effector so that when our cloner object passes through let's see if I got this facing there we go so as the spheres fall and pass through the random effectors fall off we then have those random values pushing those objects from the center due to the random position and that will actually create movement that will be traced and there we get our arms uh, our splatter arms back so there we go we have this nice splat action going on um, let's, uh, let's adjust some of this stuff here I think some of like this blob is a little bit weird over here so we can we can get a little bit more smoothness um, by adjusting the subdivision surface but I also like to keep these kind of big so we have uh, a speedy viewport and then what you can do is then place uh, these in a, a subdivision surface to smooth everything back out and really I should have done that from the get-go and then applied the uh, animation to this well, let's actually let me just do that really quickly I skipped a step I went a little bit ahead of myself so I'll just delete the uh, position uh, from the metal ball and apply it to the subdivision surface and like so there we go so we get this nice little splat going on uh, and again you can adjust a lot of stuff here and the minimum and maximum of how much of a splat you get uh, but the thing you'll notice is that we actually don't have like a, a flat splat going on uh, it's actually pretty thick and doesn't look much like a splat so the one thing that's uh, really handy that you can do to uh, fix this is uh, using a uh, whoa, using a melt deformer and what a melt deformer is going to do if I stop this and place the melt deformer uh, let me actually just group all these objects together and we'll just name this splat group group and I'll just place the me uh, melt object in that same hierarchy level as everything else and you can see that that immediately flattened our splat here so you can adjust the strength and that's just the overall strength of how this is kind of melted to the floor uh, you can adjust the radius. I'm just gonna. You can have the radius up a little bit so you get a little bit of uh, nice rounded edges, uh, and adjust the strength here a little bit more. Uh, the one thing that is important is this melted size. This just kind of increases the size of the melted of the melted object. So if it's just 100%, it's kind of like a one to one scale. So it's actually not scaling it up very much. Uh, but one thing you'll notice as I kind of scrub through my timeline is that this melt deformer is kind of wanting to bring down my object um, even though it's up in the air so what we actually need to do is go to our shape here and we'll just create a fall off for our melt deformer so it's going to be facing up in the Y so you'll see that because we have that uh, because we have this fall off if I bring this up a little bit there we go since I have this fall off our splat doesn't actually happen until it hits the fall off and then flattens everything out so that looks pretty dang cool um, one thing we can do uh, is 
we get this nice little ran, uh, rounded edge action going on depending on where the fall off is placed or it's just completely flat depending on where it's placed as well so you can kind of adjust that as you want so a bigger size means that uh, so if you can see that I scale this way way this fall off way way high uh, you can see we get a nice little subtle bulge going on which you, you might want that you might not uh, but I think that as you're in a 3d application any sense of 3d you can add to uh, generally flat object if I uh, actually I lost the the shading there because of the the subdivision surface there where you see as I render out we get this really nice splat uh, again when you actually render this out you you'll probably want to bring that render subdivision down so it renders out nice uh, and also with the subdivision surface to smooth all out all those edges uh, but there you go this is a really cool uh, kind of thing to do and uh, if say you want to make a bunch of different splats uh, number one you can really quickly and easily adjust uh, how they look by number one changing the seed on your random effector so you can see it, uh, as I'm moving the random seed that I'm getting completely different splatters uh, and then you can also adjust, as I went over before, the uh, offset seed on the uh, radi uh, uh, the variation offset of how these clones are spaced radially. Uh, and then another thing you can do is go and say you want a thicker blob in the center, but then you want more arms along the outside here. So as it splats, we got a lot more arms going on. Uh, we can adjust the random effector so it's more constrained to the outside here and then bring these outer splat arms down so now we get a different kind of splat that has a lot more of these uh, arms kind of radiating or emanating from the center of this splat so that's another style of splat you can do that uh, just by adjusting some of these uh, the cloners uh, how many arms are radiating out uh, and also adjusting uh, the meta ball here so you get uh, a lot more thick or thinner arms going on and you also want to increase the subdivision editor to smooth everything out uh, but you got a lot of control uh, with the, uh, the different kind of splats you can make using uh, the main ingredients being this cloner uh, with the random effector uh, with the fall off kind of radiating uh, moving everything out from the center of that object to create these splatter arms uh, using the tracer to then trace those splines that will have the metaball skin mesh kind of applied onto that. Uh, and then the important thing is the uh, mesh deformer, uh, the mesh object, because without it, we got this really fat, uh, kind of looks almost like a sea urchin or something like that. Uh, but the melt deformer melts everything down, becomes a flatter object. Uh, and then you can re render this out and maybe use it as a, a mat for something in uh, After Effects or something like that. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's making splats in Cinema 4D. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to hit me in the comments section. Be happy to help out. Uh, and again, if you make anything with this, I always love to see what you guys are doing. So be sure to share. I like to see what you guys are up to. Uh, and again, as always, th thank you guys so much for watching this. Really appreciate all the views and all the love. Uh, and I will see you in the next tutorial. So see you next time. Bye-bye.